Okay, here's a Denon tape deck model DR-M14HX. It's a feather touch control with Dolby B and C HX Pro. Uh, really seems to be a nice unit. Um, has adjustable bias, output, and uh, really nice VU meters. Uh, this was $15 at Goodwill uh, in Batavia, Illinois, which we picked up, and it seems to be working just fine. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and take a look at the belts. Also, see if anything needs to be lubricated, just some general maintenance. But uh, so far, it seems to be working great. Side, and I can tell you already, based on looking at the circuit board footprint and the fact that there's no open or unused sections, um, this would have been top of the line for its model. A lot of times what will happen is if there's a better model or one that does more, you're going to see like parts of the circuit board that don't have components. So whatever class this is um, would be probably the, the highest that they made for this year. It's a three motor design. You'll see three different motors in here. Each does a different function and the belt looks like it's good. What we're going to do is we're going to do some conditioning to the belt just to make sure um, that it stays good. The, the, the problem with rubber parts is once they go bad, there's no there, there's like a point of no return. So if we put some rubber conditioner on here, it will help ensure that it will stay good for a while. And we're going to do that to the cap yeah. as well, uh, because this is obviously several years old. This is Rubber Restore. You can get this off of Amazon. I put it in a dropper bottle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on here, just enough to get it wet and we'll let it dry the main thing is here is that belt now will be re-lubricated with this and, re and at least re-moistened so hopefully it won't turn to gum and it also won't shrink or it won't expand to a point to where it's not working um, i do this to all the rubber pieces we're going to do that in the front of the capstan here too so if we go ahead and take this off let me get a light and We're going to just put a little bit on here and go in a circle. And what this does, again, this will absorb into the rubber. And it's just one kind of a, one more safeguard to help prolong its life. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put some electronic cleaner in some of the main contacts here. These are the various potentiometers. So we're going to spray a little there. We're going to move it in the front. All this does is it build is it breaks up some buildup from over time. Um, here's another one here. Let me go ahead and tilt this. Just spray a little in there. You work it back and forth. What this does is this will get rid of some of the static. I see two down here. One there. One there. Let me move these in the front. You just work them a couple times. Okay. And then we have some switches here. Um, these sometimes are hard to get into but it looks like there's a spot we can spray in there. This stuff is like non-conductive and it's not gonna cause a problem, even if you don't turn it on. But I can actually see that the liquid has made its way in there. Um, so those have been cleaned as well. Let me see if there's anything else. There's really nothing else. I would say the buttons don't need, you know, don't need to be messed with, but what we've done now is these buttons have been done, the potentiometers, and we're going to go ahead now and clean off, we're going to clean the head. So to clean the heads, and then I'm also going to clean the rubber roller. Just get rubbing alcohol. Put a little bit on here. And let's go ahead and get a light. What we're going to do next is clean the heads. All we're going to do is use a little bit of rubbing alcohol right here on a paper towel. And we're just going to gently rub the top of the head not only the the record playback but then the erase head and this actually was pretty clean i don't see any dirt on here then we're going to go to the capstan which is this pin and we're going to go ahead and clean that what's actually easiest probably is to turn this on since the capstan is always running let me put a little more rubbing alcohol we're just going to hold this against it and 
what'll happen is it'll clean that up. It'll pull up. Uh, see that? That's tape residue from over the years, you know. Let's try it again. We'll hold it in place there. Also, if you have buildup on your capstan, it'll cause your tape to get grooved. Here's an example of a tape that's grooved. I don't know if you can get this in the light, but this is a very old tape. And you're going to see there's actually grooves in it. And that's because of dirt that was on capstans over time. Anyways, this is probably about as good as we can get. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, also, we're going to go ahead and it looks like that rubber absorbed everything in. But I'm going to go ahead and just use my finger and go around the rubber capstan roller and see if any dirt comes off since applying the... I know you can't see it here in the, the video is easy, but I'm just going around with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is not bad for rubber parts. I would say at this point, it's pretty much dry, so we'll be able to use a tape. But the first tape we put in there, let's put a tape that we don't care about just because there could be a little bit of residue. So we'll, we'll put a crap tape in there first. Let's then come up here, and you're going to see that this belt is still pretty wet from when I cleaned it last. We're just going to go ahead and stick this down here just to absorb some of it. Um, let me try this again. You could also use Q-tips. Um, okay. Oh, that one went off. We don't want that to happen. So let me go ahead and push this back in place. There we go, got it back on. So that's why you gotta be really careful with this stuff. But anyways, the belt is on, that will dry up, but it looks like that's conditioned. I'm gonna take a look one more place here to see if there's anything that perhaps we should be lubricating. And uh, looking here, I don't see anything. Um, looks like we're in good shape. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oil the capstan. Sometimes putting a drop of oil there is not a bad idea, but this is in such clean shape. I just don't think it's necessary. All right, the final thing we're going to do is we're gonna calibrate the speed. You would be surprised how even one or two percent difference has an audible difference in sound. This is a tape I made on a quartz lock driven tape deck by Technics. So I consider this a trusted tape. It's a thousand hertz. And we have a laptop here that is listening to the microphone in real time. I'm gonna play this. And in this particular deck, I took a look around in here. You're gonna see all sorts of adjustments. I wouldn't recommend you just start checking all these adjustments. There's bias, there's levels. This particular motor, I'm a betting person. This hole right here is the adjustment for the speed. Let's take a look and see where the speed is at. We want this to be at one kilohertz. We are almost at it. Now when I'm talking, you're gonna hear it, but watch what I do. Adjusted dead on 1K. So this deck was just a little bit off. It could have been off because the motor is older. It could have been off because the belts are a little stretched. It could be off just because I put the conditioner on the belts and the belts are in a little bit different shape for now. It also could be off because it's 30 years old and you know, or factory never was calibrated. So this now has been calibrated for speed and we are in good shape. The last thing that could be done optionally, and I don't would not recommend it for this, is we could adjust the azimuth. The azimuth is the position of the head. And you're going to find a screw. Usually it's on the left-hand side. I think on this one it's on the right-hand side. But what you'll do is you'll play a tape off of a trusted tape deck that sounds good and you can adjust the spacing of the tape head so that you get the, the highest frequency and that you get the best sound. This sounds really, really good. I'm not going to do that right now. Also, if you break the, um, there's usually some glue on there. 
I see some on the left, although I don't know if that's where it is. You just put a little bit of nail polish on there that just hardens it so that you can you can uncrack it and continue. But this doesn't need to have a tape head adjustment from what I can tell. All right, one other thing to mention is when you're using your electronic cleaner for the switches, there are different sensors up here. And you look over here, you see how when the tape comes in, it changes the mode. Sometimes these can be a little bit dusty. I'm gonna spray a little bit here on them. Um, that's it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'll clean. It looks like it already dried off. All this does is clean this um, so that when you put a tape in, it's going to choose the right tape type and everything. So. One thing I recommend is when you're working on a tape deck, especially something like this, and you don't know how long it's been sitting or how long it's been on, you want to run it and exercise it. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but usually these slip on and off very easily. They just snap off. Sometimes they're harder than others, but... Um, that's how it'll help you get in there. So I'm gonna put a tape in here. Uh, we don't wanna get copyright from YouTube, but this is Yaz. And look at that, I'm gonna turn the volume down here. But you'll see that it has a really nice VU meter. And this is a very, very old tape. It's It's got some impressions and it's just a, a shop tape that we use here. But this seems to be working really well, including the output. And then we'll test out the balance and everything later. But I'd say at this point, this is in good shape. I don't see any real dust behind the VFDs, so we don't got to pull anything out. Sometimes it's really cloudy or dusty or there's hair. Um, we're going to go ahead and just get some Windex here. We can edit this. One thing to be careful about is sometimes, especially JVC tape decks, that lettering will come off with Windex. Um, this looks like it's pretty good paint. Sometimes you test a conspicuous area, like you just do a little bit, but I can tell you I've only seen lettering come off a couple times in my entire life. We're going to go ahead and just clean this up here. So you're going to see that this is going to come together really nice. We're going to go ahead and clean the uh, tops of the switches here. Like if I go here, you'll see there's some dust. Uh, let me hit stop. We're going to do the top of this switch. Uh, the bottom here. You can also use Q-tips for these as well. But, uh, yeah, this is in, in great shape. Go ahead and clean this. Go all around here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and play it. What I would suggest is let this play through a tape. Or you could start recording. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean the headphone jack. I'm going to put a little bit of the paper towel here at cleaner. And also give a little... A little shot isn't going to hurt because it's going to go ahead and clean off the contacts for the phones. But at this point, I think we're in good shape. And we're going to go ahead and put it back together. And I'll go through and dust this. This also doesn't need a vacuum. If you're going to ever vacuum something, use a paintbrush. And then use a vacuum to pull it up. But this is so clean, it's not even worth messing with.